but we'll do the binders first. So this is a little something that we put together. Um, I've been doing this work for a long time and I would have loved something like this when I had joined into this field. So we thought just to give a little bit more resources and information because not all of our CHWs are from this field. Some are lived experience, some are emerged professionals. So they're just like they might've gotten a degree and they've just entered into our field. So we'll go through one by one, but it should go pretty smooth because this isn't your first rodeo, so you know a lot of this information already. <clears throat> so you will have the ability to get DMV vouchers. So DMV free vouchers and reduced fee vouchers. And then if you don't know how to fill it out in the binder, I love my laminates. You can give stuff away in this binder, but please do not give away the laminates. Did a lot of work to put these bad boys together and they're very clean and nice. But in the first one, um, you all have filled out this before, right? A DMV, reduced fee, yeah. a no fee voucher. Okay, so I don't even have to go through line by line or pass one out. Where you guys go and pick up the flyers. I've done it once. You've done it? You want me to go over it again? If I can pass, can. yeah, no, yeah. don't worry. So the DMV, reduced fee, and no fee. So the, the no fee or yellow, I call them like golden tickets because this is the one that everyone's gonna want, right? Mm -hmm. I have this thing. I've given multiple to the same client and I'll get to like third time's a charm and then tell them, okay, after this, we're gonna give you a reduced fee. Like you have to put in some footwork, right? I always say to my clients, I'll meet you halfway, but we can't do everything for you. It's up to you to be able to go in and do some of the process as well. So I'll send this down so that you can see it. So the only thing is you need to have an address, right? Because you need to have the DMV needs an address for where they're going to send your ID. A lot of clients might have family like down the street. You know, most of them, they've done demographic surveys that show if you're on 54th and Fig, like you most likely grew up in that area and that's where you feel comfortable and you're just out there doing your thing still. So they might have like an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent or like a sister that like, oh no, I can use their address as a mailing address. Just make sure <clears throat> that they have that first part filled in before. I know in some of your agencies, you might have been able to use your address for a mailing address. We cannot do that here. So they cannot use the DHS address. They need to be able to get an address. There are access centers that have mailing services. As we go on in this binder, it will list per spa the access centers for CES for single individuals, TAY, <clears throat> transitional age youth, and then also families. So you'd be able to give them that information and then they can contact them. Hey, do you guys have mailing services? Can I sign up and come over? Like for instance, Harbor Interfaith. They have a great amount of services where you can come in, get a, you can go in for a food bank, clothing, showers, um, and they have mailing services there, and that's in spot eight. So if you were in spot eight, especially like the San Pedro or area, it would be Harbor Interfaith that they would be able to connect with to be able to get that service. We just don't have the capacity to be able to do that. Um, give me this lovely pen. I thought it was yours. No, but I mean, I like pens, but I can't thieve it. I'm on camera right now. <laughs> the next page, reverse of that, uh, I'm sure that you're also familiar. It's the birth certificate in case someone out here needs to get another birth certificate. They want to be document ready. Um, that is the form for that bad boy. The next one on the orange is the DMH. DHS loss of referral. It's the interim housing referral. There's a way to do it through HMIS so you don't have to do the physical form, but I just wanted you guys to have a couple of the physical papers in case. It's going to be very rare that you're gonna actually do that, but because we are housing for health, if you are, because you guys are both, right? So you're shelter and you're unsheltered. So let's say you're in a shelter and you are able to identify this person has a higher need of like medical treatment, let's say they're on a breathing machine, they're on a second bunk and they're not near a plug and it's dangerous to have that plug going down with other individuals, you be able to refer them to interim housing through DHS. I would highly recommend 
once you identify someone like that, speaking with whoever, I don't remember who your guys' program manager is going to be, but in the interim until that individual is onboarded, you can reach out to Brooke. Brooke is really good and she'll be able to help navigate you guys to get that person into a bed. Next page, interim housing list. So this is the one if like wherever you are spa wise that you'll be able to, if someone wants to get an ID, let's say they're in spa five, bam, point of contact for spa five for the lead agencies. As we know, there are a lot of agencies that will not be listed on here. If you know one, go ahead and add to it or just keep it in your back pocket. Um, there's even churches that do mailing services. I've asked clients before for other resources. I learn about resources from clients. They know so much more. Usually uh, they're out there and they're living it. The next yellow folder is the point of, the point directory for the CES access. So that's also one you can refer them to for emergency shelter beds and other access centers and resources or services. It's like referral, right? We have a very low capacity of what we're able to do and we can't do, but if someone wants something, we can give a referral. And that's where the HMIS that we're gonna do the read only comes in. Let's say they were working with someone from PATH and you're able to look in HMIS and then reconnect that individual. Maybe they lost their phone number and you, they have their phone number in there or they lost their actual phone. We have really cool access to a lot of incentives here that I never had at my former agency and I think it's really rad. We even have these track phones that we pay 30 days for Let's say they get their first dose and we wanna make sure to send them a reminder for their second dose. We can give them a track phone, put them on this list to make sure that their 30 days after that gets renewed again. So they have enough time to be able to be reminded to get their second dose. I don't know many agencies that do that. And I think that's really rad. So let's say I was working with my LASA team. I, I got cleaned out, all my stuff is gone or I got my phone stolen and you happen to have one of those track phones you can give them one of the track phones and then you're able to send that little message in HMIS, hey, so-and-so you know, is trying to contact you, this is their new number. So I think that's really rad. And then just being able to have a couple other access centers to refer clients to will come in handy. Uh, the countywide home team referral, we will most likely, if you were in the field, you would call a 1-800 number, but if they needed a physical form, you can write that out too. It might be a client that doesn't need the actual phone call to where the home team comes out to them. They might be more high functioning and just say, you know, I was on this medication, I was going to the location right there on, what is it, 6th and Beacon in um, San Pedro and I wanna get reconnected. You can write out an actual referral if that person feels more comfortable going themselves. This one right here, federally, federally qualified health centers. So it's kind of wonky. It goes by, the spas kind of jump. There's one, two, and then it goes to six, eight, and then it will jump to five, and then four. I don't know why it does that. Oh, and then three, seven. I tried to put it in best order as I can. But this is, and a lot of the clinical staff already have this information too, like the Vax Plus will have this information, but this is just in case someone needs a little bit more medical treatment. Uh, you can refer them depending on what spa you are. And it will say like if they need to have insurance, uh, benefits on site. So that's where this one comes in. This is more of a clinical side, further uh, medical services. Narcan. These ones you can definitely give out to clients. Uh, Brooke is going to show you on the OneDrive where all of this information lives. So if you give out like you give out so many home referrals and you need another one, you're able to go back in there on that OneDrive where all of these documents live and print your heart until your heart's desire. But the Narcan ones, you can definitely give these to clients if they want to feel more comfortable with how to administer Narcan. Um, do you guys know 
Have you had training on Narcan? Do you want me to go over it? I have training. You have training? Okay. Because you can get, we can get Narcan. You'll get it from uh, the warehouse on Los Angeles. And there's a whole way that you need to keep track of it. So make sure when you do get it, ask them what the process is. Because this one is one of the ones when we first were giving them out, it is expired, but it's just shelf life. It actually has, I want to say, 18 months past the shelf life, so it's still good. I just keep this in my backpack as an example, because a lot of CHWs have never administered Narcan, and there's a much better training than I can do, but I can give you the gist of it. But if you've already done it, we don't have to go through that again, but you can get these. These are a high commodity item out there in the field. Sometimes you'll get clients coming up to you to ask you if you have harm reduction. And this is one of the harm reductions. You just need to make sure when you get it from the warehouse, ask them how to do it. Give them a little training because those ones in the warehouse will have a little SKU or QR code that you have to scan because we have to keep track of these per the state because they are prescriptions. CPS, have you ever had to call for CPS? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a little breakdown of how to call. And even if you have a question, if maybe I should call, you can call because they'll tell you yes or no. Uh, the next one is APS, Adult Protective Services. I've had to call that one in this field more than CPS. Uh, we've had, when I was at LASA, we had this poor woman in her 70s, I think she was late 70s or early 70s, but they wanted her place where she was living so they can charge more money. Oh. So the guy, I don't know if he was the owner or landlord, removed her and her belongings and brought her down. I don't know how familiar you are with the Grand Corridor. So along the 110 freeway, Grand Street, going all the way down and all those little side streets. Have you ever noticed a ton of encampments? That's called the Grand Corridor. My team covered that when I was at Lhasa. So, and uh, some of the other PEH, people experiencing homelessness at that encampment, flagged down my team and were like, some guy just dumped her. He dumped her with her belongings and her damn reclining chair. Mm -hmm. Poor thing had never been homeless in her life, scared to death. Mm -hmm. Even the clients were looking out for her. Like, it is not right. And I definitely had my team call APS. I don't know what the follow through was for it. Like they <laughs> came through and like helped her. She had an income. They just, they wanted more money for her spot. It must have been, she had been there for so long. They can't raise the rent situation. I mean, there's a bunch of shady people in this world, but like that's heart wrenching. That's cold. It's so cold, right? <laughs> you have a question? Oh, so in, in that case, what do APS in the ideal world, what do they do? They would So go. APS will come out. APS has services. APS, Adult Protection Services, is going to come out and investigate the entire situation. Okay. And they'll be able to, like, it was very wrong and illegal for him to do that. So hopefully he got charges pressed against him. Like, shoot, I hope you lost your dang house that you're trying to rent out for more dollars. Right. That's just so good. inhumane. Yeah, it's good to consult if you're ever just wondering. No, it's making mm -hmm. a call just to consult. Like, hey, is yep. this really an APS call? And then you can go from there. And yeah. Sometimes it will be, yes, it is, of course. And it will 100%. Be, yeah. It's better to call even if you're questioning it than not call at all. Because you might be like borderline and they're like, oh, no, definitely we can do something. And then otherwise it's like, no, it's like a super gray area. Like, it just, you never know until you call and ask. There's no dumb question. Or okay. well, they might refer you somewhere else that's more specific mm -hmm. to your thinking. Yeah, it's a really good resource. And then um, CPS actually has a four-hour training that is very in-depth. I've asked if they want us to do it. I've done it with my old team at my former agency. You guys might have done it, but it's actually like a certificate of completion and everything. So that's something, in keep it in the back of your mind if you just want something to add to your resume. You can do that as well. I wanted to have something with legal information, and the only thing that really came to mind is Legal Aid Foundation. I have a couple of friends that are attorneys that do pro bono with them, so I know like there are some good attorneys. So I just printed their main offices um, and my laminations, <laughs> but it's so that you have something just in case anyone asks you for any like legal services, legal aid. If you know of anything else, please share. Uh, we can definitely add to these folders. 
Uh, veteran services. Veteran services are kind of hard to navigate if you're not in that realm. So we were able to get direct point of contacts for a few individuals, um, and it covers all the spas. So there's two individuals on my laminated list from the VA that covers spa two, four, five, eight, and then one, three, six, and seven. And then um, an individual from PATH, from their veteran services that covers spas four and five. The next three in the purple folder are gonna be PMRT. So have you guys ever had to call the psychiatric mobile response team? So, you know, so psychiatric mobile response team, let's say I'm doing outreach. I'll give you a, a real example because I've done this before. I'm doing outreach with my partner. There's this individual, he doesn't really look homeless, but you can tell like something's going on. And so before we left the location, I'm like, let's just go talk to him. Let's see what's going on. And so he was starting to walk up these stairs in downtown where there's bridges. And so I was like, hey, you know, we're out here, you know, just doing outreach. Can we talk to you for a minute? And he's like, yeah, and he sits down, he starts crying. He's like, I was just about to walk up this bridge and jump. And so we sat down and I was like, do you care if I call someone to maybe come and give you some help? And he was totally open for it. It's a long, it's a long conversation because it takes them on average like two to three hours, sometimes four to respond. But I just sat there. I let him talk. I didn't judge him. Nothing like that. As long as they're open, right? And then they came and he totally went with the ambulance. Because when you do call... Um, you will, if you are put on a 72 hour hold, I don't want to say 5150 because there's so many other ones that it can fall under for that 72 hour hold. Um, and I've also had to do this with an individual that just was unable to have a conversation dodging in and out of traffic, trying to harm themselves. I had to call and they responded and that person did not want to go. Police when you get one of these calls, there will be some form of law enforcement unit. And if you do get placed on a hold, you legally have to be put into the ambulance or, yeah, so that you can be taken to the nearest um, ER where they have the psych ward. But that person didn't want to go. And so this whole thing, they had to like cuff them and force them in there. I felt horrible, but they needed the help. He was jumping in front of moving vehicles on a very, very busy street of Los Angeles. But um, so that's psychiatric mobile response. They're really great, but just know it's gonna take a minute for them to respond. If you've ever called and you know, always let your program manager know what's happening just in case it might seep into overtime. I highly doubt any of them are gonna be like, ooh, you know what, you gotta go at five. <laughs> like, that's not what we're about here. If it's someone that doesn't have a plan, and they just want to talk to someone, they might be having like suicidal ideas or what is it? It's Ideation. Ideations or thoughts. This is a really great number. It's a suicide prevention hotline. Feel free to give anyone this information too. And then there's also the DMH Access Center. The home teams do have teams that will come out from DMH, but they're extremely limited in how many they have as well. They also will come out and help clients and make sure that they get their medications and stuff too. Emergency wise though, I would definitely start with PMA or PMRT, Psychiatric Mobile Response Team. See, this is just a bunch of refreshers for you guys, right? See, it's not so bad. The next one in the red, I love this one, SASH. It is the Los Angeles County Substance Use Treat Treatment Services. So you're doing outreach, pre-engagement, scouting, you're at an event, you're at a shelter, no matter what. You come across an individual and they're like, you know what, I've been using and I don't want to anymore, can you help me? Bam, call this number. Call this number, they'll wanna to talk to the client. Um, they're gonna get do an over the phone assessment with them. It will take a couple days. Uh, make sure that that individual, if you have a track phone and they don't have a phone, please give them a phone. And also make sure whoever it is you're talking to gets your guys' work cell phone number as well in case they can't contact that person again. Maybe if they're like at a certain location, you and your partner or you and your program manager can go and follow up and let them know, hey, they have a spot at Redgate. You're good to go just to let them know. 
think with this one too, uh, a lot of times if they have LA care and you call Sash, they can assign them a whole person care worker who kind of oh, just takes over. Nice. Not random age, so. That's good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Our next one, domestic violence shelter hotlines. Oh, yeah. You're not going to get an actual address, as you guys know, if you've ever called mm -hmm. for domestic violence shelters. Um, and you're also, if you've ever called, know that it can be hours on the phone trying to find one with an opening. I have gone through three counties once of calling number after number to try to get um, a client a bed. Sometimes it's quicker, sometimes it's not. But definitely give a call. If they're not ready... I learned something actually from my old team at my former agency. It was such a clever idea. They wrote down these numbers, but instead of, you know, DV shelter, she wrote food banks. She was like, once you're ready, because her abuser was right there. Mm. He was like at the hip all the time. Sorry. <laughs> he was always like right next to her, right? And so my team knew she was getting abused physically and emotionally, but they couldn't do anything or say anything because he was right there. And then one day he walked away. And so um, my former head worker, she wrote these down and she like, she knew what she meant by food banks. Mm -hmm. She was able to, I don't know what he did, but she was able to call one day and it just worked like that. Sometimes they just have openings and it works. She was able to go to a safe location where they picked her up and she got away from her abuser. So it's really cool. So that's an idea. Um, if you want to give these numbers out and they aren't ready yet or they're not able to, just put food bank, something clever, shopping centers. Mm -hmm. This one right here, I can't go over because I don't have the full information. It's something that Brooke wanted uh, added in here, but there will be a doctor or someone, a that. training for the map provider um, that they'll go over with you guys. So I'm not much help when it comes to this one. And then the last one is the referral for family solution centers. I don't see you all actually filling that part out. Um, we're not gonna do a lot of that, but there are all of the main per spa um, lead agencies that assist families. So just for reference, if for some odd reason you have to do it, also let your supervisor or your program manager know that you're putting in this referral. It's really hard to get uh, family openings in shelters too, just like it is DMH or D, sorry, DVs. Okay, backpacks. Wait again, oh, the all go, sorry. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So in these bad boys, I just wanted to make sure you guys had some incentives to be able to offer. Let's go over in the first uh, zipper, or I guess it's the middle zipper, where the sharp container is. Let's go over some of that, because this is harm reduction. And because you guys are both sheltered and unsheltered, it's very important when you go to a shelter that you take out any harm reduction that you have in your backpack and leave it in your vehicle because you cannot take it into the shelter because they will confiscate it. It's their rules, you know, harm reduction or not, they don't want these things inside the shelters. We understand and we have to be respectful of that. Uh, we have had some sheltered CHWs before we didn't realize, don't put the harm reduction. So now I don't even put this stuff into the backpacks for the beginning, I let the program managers but I text um, Brooke yesterday, and she just wanted me to make sure I go over, just remove them. So we have an abundance of sharp containers with everything that they need inside if they're using injectable drugs at the warehouse on 7th Street in the, on the fifth floor. I just put one, I didn't wanna like, you guys can choose what you wanna put in your backpacks, but I wanted you to have some stuff. And then these bad boys, M is for meth. So this is a meth pipe kit. Um, they, we do not have the pookie pipes. I think it was really hard on a line item to justify buying pookie pipes. So it's a crack pipe with tin foil so that it can make their own little ball at the end. And I think they can YouTube it. I've never done it personally, but I know that the team YouTubed it to know that it can work. To make what? The pookie pipe. To make the little ball 
Like, so so that they can do the their thing to cook the mud the meth before you smoke it. I can't give you too many details. I don't know. And then C is for crack. So C is for crack pipes. Uh, none of them have drugs included, but we do have all the clean fixings for them. So the pipe uh, looks like I don't know. It, it, um, these little foily guys, I believe, clean the pipes. I know that these little rubber fellas are detachable so that if they want to hit their friend's pipe, they can pop that off and put it on there if they care enough to do that. So that I know that we had a training when I first came over and they told us that syphilis was running wild again. So that's something that, oh shoot, is this how to make it? Oh dang. It's like origami. I like origami though. I can make a, it's either a hat I'm gonna give one to all my or a nephews. pocket. <laughs> You're gonna give a crack for a meth question? No, 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 origami, oh. origami. Nice. So that's what those guys are. So when you guys go to um, the warehouse, you're gonna have access to get like as much as this within reason as you want, right? So just know C is for crack, M is for meth, and then you'll obviously know what a sharp container is. We have these other, we're out right now, but I hope they order more because these are really room saving in your backpack and I just think they're kind of cool. These are other little sharp containers. It looks like ammunition. It is cool. I know, AR right? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, really? These little guys? Yeah. Oh, a box of it? Oh, they should bring it over to the warehouse. So these ones, you can put You can put way more of these in your backpack. Then you can fit these guys. So hopefully they get more of these ones in. Okay, there's also... I just put stuff... So that you guys have a little something because I know like you're hitting the field tomorrow and I don't want you to be unprepared I want you to have a little something so lots of clients have doggos doggy treats these are they're not like extremely fancy but it's something these are little hygiene kits that they put together at the warehouse um, let's see do the USB ports work I, I've heard these backpacks, I actually picked them because they have these little rechargeable, because our work phones are outdated iPhones, so the battery does not last very long. So I picked these little guys. I've heard mixed things. I don't have one of these backpacks, but you can recharge it. So there's a little wire that it comes with. So as long as you have, you know, the cube, you can plug that bad boy in and charge it. I don't know how long of a charge it holds, but I've heard mixed reviews. The whole idea for me to pick these backpacks, I'm kind of nerdy and I thought that was really rad. <laughs> so I wanted like everyone to be able to like, charge their stuff out in the field. Because y'all are going into shelters as well, I included some fun. There's a plethora for you to choose from. I didn't want you to have too much. You can gauge what you want. You can also keep things in your trunk as well. Uh, adult one or like a teen. And then a more of a kid one coloring book. There are two packs of 12 pack crayons in here. And I also put some feminine products and they are loose. We are low on stuff, so I couldn't just throw a box in there. So I apologize if it's an uncomfortable grab for you in your backpack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that's pretty much, oh, I put some hand warmers too. It's getting cold. I put a couple hand warmers in each of your backpacks. Once you go, I don't know if you've had a tour of the warehouse yet, but you'll see, like, there's so much more. There's Gatorade, there's, there's freaking Snickety Snacks, there's all kinds, there's uh, tents. I can't fit a tent in your backpack, I'm sorry. Uh, there's sleeping bags, there's really rad stuff, incentives to when we're engaging to help build rapport and to be able to provide to the client. <clears throat> but that is a gist of what's in your backpack and other things that you can grab in the resource binder. Any questions on any of it? What happens with materials as far as, I wasn't let's asking say, you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's that? If we start running out of stuff, what would you advise us to do? Head to the warehouse and try yep. to stop? Yeah, so you will get a specific day, a scheduled day weekly to go to the warehouse. It's a, like a one hour window because we also have this really rad program called Peer Ambassador. I don't know if anyone's gone over that with you guys yet. Perfect. So you'll get gift cards once you're approved to carry the gift cards, and you'll have to go weekly to exchange them. Like, 
even if you didn't give them all out, it has to mean like they're going to check those ones back in and give you a fresh batch, fresh batch and all the paperwork required for it. So weekly, you'll be going there anyway. So we made it to where you're getting the gift cards and revamping on any supplies that you need. Weekly. Weekly. So you'll be good to go. If for whatever reason you need to go in addition to that, just hit up your PM. Like you'll be able to go. It won't be like, Frederick, I'm sorry, you were Monday, you snooze, you lose. <laughs> it's not like that here. You don't have to worry. Um, and then if you're out, let's say you're on vacation and it was your day to turn in the gift cards, they'll just reschedule you when the nearest one is because it's in with within a week. If you don't return them, it's being out of compliance. Return the one you don't use. Anymore. Yeah, and then do a little switcheroo for the, the new batch. Gotcha. But it's not too bad. Um, trying to think what else can I tell you that you probably don't know I'm not used to being done so early have, have you seen response times change as far as a PMRT calls because I haven't of the pandemic? Call. oh you haven't uh no we well when I was still at Lhasa we had a woman that was going in and out of traffic and she just wasn't able to like put together a conversation she was also very naked uh. and uh, I was with a council member and even she called and wasn't able to get an expedited time. Right. And they told her still, it's two to three hours to respond. But because she was going in and out of traffic and naked, someone passing by called PD. Got it. And they had to do their thing. Ryan, you, any noticeable differences as far as PMRT call, PMRT response? Um, so, um, yeah, I, my situation in the past was that it took pretty long, a couple of hours. Um, having luckily, more recently, um, I had someone who was able to write roles on my team, so kind of just went that oh, route, cool. which is a lot quicker mm -hmm. than going through PMRT. Right. So I haven't used it in probably over two years. Same with the, I think same agency stuff, but like they were saying it took so long that they were just getting our like LCSW guys to just help with the holes. That was it. It was just like, don't wait the time if you need to call us, call us. Yeah. Because like, I have a question sort of for you in the group, actually, because obviously our role is incredi incredibly limited to promoting the vaccine. Obviously, the reason we know these things is because we best equip ourselves with these tools should we ever need them for whatever reason. However, they are not the primary driver that motivates us to go outside. None of us will be taking anyone to the housing authority. None of us will be negotiating with the landlord. However, would it be advisable for us to familiarize ourselves with which E6 team is in our area? Or it could which... be, that can totally. We're gonna start doing collaborations uh, more frequently sure. with those teams um, and that's something definitely in the future and then you all will be collaborating with like my team Fernando and the other two PMs on the sheltered side so there'll be a lot of cross training and I'm really big on collaboration so I contact my people uh, from Lhasa all the time to get hot spots to be able to go and scout because maybe their hot spots could be something that we can find individuals that are interested in getting the vaccine. They've called us with clients that were interested in getting the vaccine. We've called them because we one client wanted to get vaccinated, but he didn't want to in case he had any bad reactions or wasn't feeling well. He didn't want to feel like that out there, like unsheltered. So he wanted to go to an emergency shelter as long as he was able to, and then he would get the vaccine. So there's been like a really awesome collaboration with PATH, with LASA, with um, Harbor Interfaith, personally, like on my teams. So we're really big on that and we're trying to do more of it. Because why not go to the agencies that are the professionals when it comes to that and be able to collaborate with them because they have the capacity to do those transports and to help with the more of the documentation and everything and getting someone that's housing ready. Yeah. But not saying that we don't do really great things too, because we do. <laughs> but it's just always best to collaborate and be able to work together instead of against each other. Because I know some agencies are just like, I'm not gonna do it, but we'll do whatever here. We'll just figure out how it works. As long as it's benefiting the client, that's what it's all about. We're all here because we care about the unhoused, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't think you guys would be here. <laughs> um, that's pretty much all. You guys are going in the field. Can you 
I will go and hook you up so that you have at least a CHW shirt tomorrow. Has we, anyone we, given you those yet? We do, Mr. Okay, cool. They, you all mm -hmm. don't have them. No? So okay. Brooke might be here right now, and I think you keep them in the back. back room. We have some in the back, and then we have some, depending on sizes, right. in the warehouse. They just sent the emails, and I can't have the shirt dates. It's not going to be until December 13th. Oh, so you don't need a shirt yet. Do you want a shirt? If I can get you a shirt, would you like a shirt? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to write down? I don't want to be intrusive. Your size? It's a medium. Okay. <laughs> Billy, what you got? I'll take a large. Large? Okay. Let me see if I can hook you all up. Frederick, you have one? Mm -hmm. Good, yep. good? Good. Okay. I know they said they're a little small. Just in case. Yeah. yeah. Let me pull, and then you can gauge it, and we can go from there. <laughs> um, I am printing a few more items. I just felt compelled to want to add to your list of stuff, and not that necessarily that there would be anything new you don't know. I appreciate the fact that many of you have walked into this room with a significant amount of resources that you've gathered and built for your work. Never ever hesitate to share those with a colleague who might be lacking those or not aware of those things. The other thing I thought would be helpful for us to just keep in mind is that in a environment like ours where funding is limited at times, or funding changes. An organization might say that they offer showers, but it's not until we learn from word of mouth or go there that we realize it maybe got reduced to just two days a week and not seven days a week. So obviously one of the things we must constantly be vigilant of is how often organizations might shift their uh, services, even if their services are listed online. I would argue that online or in a, I'm gonna date myself, a rainbow directory, <laughs> These things are often very, very um, prone to change, especially in this field. Um, I know this is a little bit beside the point. The other thing I thought about mailing that we didn't mention is that some organizations may require the person do an intake or receive services regularly at that place before they're allowed to even collect mail. And if we don't warn folks, unless we are incredibly familiar with the organization and know for a fact, it can often create a series of downward spirals where the person will just increase their frustration. Why did you send me to Santa Monica? I wasted the last few bucks I had. I got here and then they told me that I have to be a client for six months before I collect mail. I use that just as an example to remind folks that we must really try to grasp these things and understand it as much as possible so that we can be effective. Um, Ryan, I wanted to pick on you for a minute because I often go back to you because how Help me understand, how recently were you still embedded in that C3, C3 team out here? A week ago. A yeah. week ago. Yeah. Like thir last Thursday was my last day. Yeah. Would you mind if I brought a stool and kept you here for every class I do from here on out? <laughs> so that I could just go to the voice of reason. And you, voice of reason? No, Rudy, I call bullshit on that. We don't do that. I wish we'd find a better C3 employee to put here. But oh, <laughs> chop, yeah. chop, folks. <laughs> Less redheadish. <laughs> no, but I want to be clear, though. Um, this is important because, again, the one thing we will remember, especially Ryan can articulate this, is that in the weeks and months following the beginning of when the pandemic was declared, declared things shut down. Ambulances were refusing to transport people because hospitals were being kept open for what they thought was going to be a wave of people who were sick and a number of things reduced in a very simplistic way libraries if you were in the habit of going to the library because you could lay low in air conditioning you had a bathroom forget it those places were closed so i often think of your position and folks like you have probably seen the divergence or changes happen yeah. as far as what services come back on and which didn't come back on yeah. um Again, this is uh, barely scraping the surface of what would eventually become a very vast array of services that one would like to familiarize themselves with. I will also add, and I don't think you all need me to tell you this, especially our folks here on this side of the table, that more often than not, you have a colleague who is an expert in different pieces. The person who you've often seen me saying hello to, Anthony Ruffin, who I introduced to a few folks, is then a person I often think is the ultimate example of how to handle a 5150, of how to handle a psych call in that he communicates like no one else to paramedics, law enforcement, emergency room nurses, 
uh, psychiatric professionals in emergency hospitals, and even courtrooms that eventually determine at Division 95 whether a person goes into conservatorship or not. Again, I'm not going to argue he's the only one. I'm confident there are others. However, start to recognize that in your team, you will meet folks who are, quite frankly, really well-versed and knowledgeable on that. Don't rely on them blindly. Don't just say, hey, Ryan, come over here. This person is ready to go to treatment. You take the steps to see what Ryan guides you in so that you might be able to navigate that car without his assistance moving forward so that it would help put you on the spotlight. Have you often been the go-to for certain populations? Yeah, definitely that. I mean, my background is in, in that substance use counselor, so. From one to 10, does it bother you three, bother you seven? No, I actually like that. Really? I enjoy it, yeah. Um, that's something, especially like the new hires and stuff on the last job, I used to like to, you know, do the gather kind of goes around and different harm reduction services in the area okay. and kind of walk through the, the um, snapshot line and the aspect pool and all that kind of stuff. Very so, good, yeah, very good to know. Um, when you heard uh, Lindy mentioned Matt. Were you familiar? Yes. What could you tell us about it? Um, so yeah, the uh, the um, warm line is something especially in in LA County, um, and it's uh, it's relatively. I mean, they're pretty responsive. Every once in a while, you they won't answer, and that the number is listed in the binder. Sure. Um, and um, it, um, you can leave a message, and they will call back pretty. Pretty relatively, pretty quickly too. Um, I think the uh, the main thing with that is you know just when talking with this population about that, not in a way you know we want to be really trauma informed, not in a way where we're like, oh, you're using heroin, you should be on Suboxone, you know, like really meeting them where they're at, and if it is something that they would, you know, if they decide it's something they'd be into. Um, then the mat's a really good um, option for that. I always kind of just let them know um, before then is, you know, I know we don't know this person we're about to get on the phone with, right. but they will be the one that is going to provide us with the appropriate amount of uh, of Suboxone. Um, so kind of honesty is the best policy there because we want to make sure that they get you the right amount that you need. Um, and you say something cool. incredibly strong, Ryan, in that you've probably seen colleagues fail because they approach it in such a clinical, mechanical approach. Yeah. And it's not because they're bad, yeah. but it's sometimes because there's a way of putting words in the presence of an individual that may not seem so harmful or so scary. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Wonderfully said, very well said. Yeah. I wish I could have captured that and put it in a bottle. You Thanks. Want to see <laughs> if this is the size you want Let's before see. I pull more? You can try it on if you want. You can walk down the aisle. You can tell them if it looks good. Oh, runway. Yeah. Runway. Yeah. A little turn at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the one. Okay. That's good, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the one? Yeah. Okay. Say yes to the shirt. Well, hold on to that. Say yes to the shirt. I'll have you guys some more things in there. Yeah, that's why, just in case. So I'm not doing a whole walk? I mean, you can, we, will, we will, like, throw our masks for you because I don't have a hat on.